Hey, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're you're connecting from, anywhere in the U.S. or anywhere around the world. I know we actually have some people from Asia. It's in the O Dark Thirty uh, for you over there, but thank you for joining us. Hey, welcome. This is the Sales Hunter Coaching Program. Kind of a demonstration call, so I'm glad you're on. Go ahead and chime in. We've got almost 700 people who have registered for this event, so this is absolutely terrific. So feel free to use that box over there on the side to chime in. What I'm going to be talking about, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is some very specific language you should either be not using or using with regards to prospecting. Now, we look right now, we're just on the cusp of ending the first half of the fiscal year, the calendar year. And that means we got half a year left. Some of you are very much on track. Some of you are behind track. Hey, you know, you're going to get there. You're going to be there. But one of the things that I want you to really challenge you with right now is, is push yourself right now to be using the telephone more. Now, this is something interesting that I'm going to talk about here for just a moment because one of the things I do in the coaching program is really give you real-time stuff, real-time. It's not canned. It's, it's real-time. Is The simple thing of this, A, you are in the summer. Okay, If you're in the northern hemisphere, probably about 95% of you, we're, in, we're, we're there. Okay, And that means a lot of people are on vacation. And as a result, a lot of people think, well, nobody's answering the telephone. But right now is more than ever is a great time to be using the telephone. And here's the reason. Because fewer people are making phone calls during the summer. Fewer people are working and schedules are a little bit awry. So you can jump in and you can be using the telephone right now very aggressively. Now, especially this coming week. Now, July 1st is Canada Day. July 4th is Independence Day in the U.S. That means this next week is a lot of holidays. The end of this week is a lot of holidays. And a lot of people say, well, I can't really be prospecting. I'll tell you what, this is a great time to be prospecting, especially for those of you who are in businesses where you're in a continuous selling mode. Now, what do I mean by that? You, you sell a consumable. You, you maybe sell to supply houses or, you know, you are a supply house and you're selling to companies that are continuously buying. And this is a great time to be calling competitors. Now, I love this because here's the thing. Many of your competitors are actually going to be shutting down or maybe taking a little, uh, you know, softer period in terms of service during the next week because of so many people being on vacation. So this is that perfect time for you to be jumping in and calling your, com your competitors. In, in, in other words, no, your competitors, customers, and actually stealing them from them. I love, I love prospecting, telephone prospecting during holiday weeks. And the 4th of July is one of them. Coming up later in the year, we're going to have Labor Day. Then, of course, we got Thanksgiving. And, of course, that whole area around Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's. Excellent period. Hey, people checking in from all over the country. Out, outstanding. Now, this is the coaching program. And the coaching program is, is, is really focused around prospecting, but i also going to be talking a lot about selling. And the way this program works is, is I do a call like this every month. We jump in, we get some very specific topics, very hands-on, and then we do a lot of interaction. Boy, people checking in from all over the place. I love it. I love it. I don't have my glasses on, so it's a little harder to see the screen, so I apologize. I love it. This is great. Now, here's one of the cool things, though. This program is on Webinar Jam platform. And the coaching program, the specific coaching program, because it's a much smaller group, very small group, it's actually on Zoom. It's video. It's video. And we can interact. And that really is cool. So it makes it for some very dynamics. And I'm going to share with you some really some cool ways with which you can get connected to the coaching program and become part of the coaching program. So stick along, stick along the way. And I've got actually a kind of a cool bonus because anybody who signs up for it here, I'm going to be giving them an additional uh, up to an hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh -huh. Sounds awesome. So anyway, hey, let, let's jump in. Now, I, I, I was really struggling with, should I, should I talk first with what you want to be doing or should I talk first about what we shouldn't be doing? And, and um, chicken and egg question. I'm going to deal with what we shouldn't be doing first in terms of how we prospect. I'm going to share with you some of, the, some of the major things as to people get into and really get some really... Mm, and then they wonder why their prospecting doesn't work. They wonder why their sales doesn't work, okay? Now, many of you have heard me use this line before, but you can't take a Walmart shopper and make them a Nordstrom customer. No, you can't. 
But you also can't take a bad prospector and have them continue to use bad prospecting techniques and expect them to be a good salesperson. No. What I want to do is I want to share with you today, what are some techniques, what are some things that you can change? The number one, I'm going to go through about five or six things that I need you to stop doing. And I'm going to share with you some techniques as to how to get around this. First one, is this a good time to talk? You never, ever, ever ask that question. Here's, here's rule number one. When you are prospecting, you are interrupting their day. You are interrupting their day. Now, don't, oh no, I can't interrupt. I don't want to interrupt today. Well, guess what? If you don't, if you aren't willing to interrupt somebody's day, you're never going to be successful selling. But here's the piece that I say: Look, if you are on the verge of having a car accident and you're driving, would you want the passenger next to you to not interrupt you and tell you what you're about to do? No, you would. You would jump in in a heartbeat and say, "Watch it, car coming right there on the left." You, you'd want to avoid it. This is the approach we have to take to sales. You see, we have something, each of us have something that we can provide our customers, that we can help them really improve, yeah, improve their life, improve their business, improve something. And they're not going to be able to benefit from that unless they buy from us. Well, they're not going to buy from us unless we interrupt them. So get over it. I, it interrupting them is totally fine. Now, some people aren't going to get it initially. I get it. I, I totally get that. You're, you're going to get some people you're going to call and they're going to push back. And I'll share with you how you do this. This, this, is, this is really cool. You, you say, okay, is this, you know, is this a good time to talk? No, you never do. You jump immediately into a question. You jump immediately into a question. Now, this is the other problem that people say, well, well, gee, so aren't you supposed to introduce yourself? No, very lightly you introduce yourself. Now, again, this runs counter to a lot of people, but I'll tell you what. I've been teaching, I was just with about 250 salespeople over the weekend in Tampa, speaking to a major trade association. And I shared with them this, and, and several people came up to me afterwards and said, hey, Mark, I've been using that technique. You first shared it with me three, four years ago, and it's worked magnificent, magnificently. The technique is this. Instead of saying, is this a good time to talk? You say, hi, this is Mark. And you immediately jump into a question. You jump into a question that's relevant to them, not to you, not about what you sell, but relevant to them. Now, they're going to sit there and say, who is this? Then you get to say, well, I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. And then you, I mean, then you repeat the question. And then you're going to say, well, then they're probably going to say, well, why? Why? And you say, well, we help companies, people like you, achieve a level of success, something of that nature, you see. And then you jump right back in the question. You see, here's the whole thing. If I start off my conversation by saying, is this a good time to talk? What are they going to say? Of course not. No, you interrupted me. And if you immediately go in and say, well, hi, I'm Mark Henry. Da, 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 they're going to say, oh, shut up. This is a salesperson. Click. They're, they're going to hang up on you. They're not going to want to talk to you. So what I do is I immediately, I immediately put the question in their court. I immediately put the question in their court. Now, what I'm doing is I'm getting them to do the talking. You see, because they're going to then ask me, well, who are you? Fine. Then I can. Now, you see what's interesting? Because now they've asked me. It actually resonates. They're now listening to it. See, before they wouldn't be listening to it. Now, I'll come back and I'm going to build on this. And hey, don't hesitate. Throw in your questions along the way. Wow, we got tons of people here. I got to put my glasses on here for just a second. This is absolutely Great. We got Kentucky, Colorado, uh, north coast of Ohio, north uh, Silicon Valley, Houston, uh, northern Ohio, Hollywood, Florida, UK, NYC, Louisiana, Virginia. Everybody's in the house. Michigan, Big Ten country, Minnesota, Big Ten country. Hey, some people right here in Omaha, Spokane, my my birthplace. I was actually born. Yes, Australia, 1.30 a.m. I knew you're going to be on the line. New Hampshire, Big Apple. Everybody's on the line. This is absolutely terrific. So this good. And if you get some questions, if you have some questions along the way, feel free, pop them in there. Okay. Pop, pop them in there. So anyway, Hey, let's jump number two. Okay. Now just checking in <clears throat> drives me nuts. Please, 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 please do ever, ever, ever say just checking in. Don't ever say that. And, and this same thing goes with the emails. This is, this is one of the big th Think about this. You get this email that says just checking in. What is that? What does that tell everybody? 
your message is worthless. You, you, you really don't have a reason to call them. Just checking in. Well, let me tell you something. You send me that note, I'm going to send you back a note just checking out. No, you don't say just checking in because that's totally offensive because it's like there's no reason for me to call you. So I thought I'd just be checking with you. You always call with a reason. Now, there's one exception. Can I give you an exception to this? I'll share with you an exception. This is a strategy, and I don't recommend it be used frequently. But there may be a play for you to use a strategy. And this is where you have somebody. It's a big prospect you're trying to hit, you're trying to get. And what you do is you sit there and you reach out to them every day, every week at the exact same time. Now, think about that for a moment. If you had somebody who you knew you could do business with, and again, got to have the right context and the right scope, and, and I'll grab you on some one-on-one -on -one coaching and I'll share with you because it's a little bit tricky to do, but it works great. You might say, hey, I'm going to call you every Monday morning at 8.32 a.m. And you call them literally every Monday morning at 8.32 a.m. Well, after a while, you do run out of things to say at 8.32 on a Monday morning. So you sit there and say, I'm just checking in. It's 8.32. It's 8.32. I had a gentleman come up to me the other day. He said that he had been chasing an account. Took him 13 months, 13 months at using that strategy. But he landed it. And it was the biggest account he had ever landed. So it can work. But that, ooh, use with caution. Use with caution. You see, just checking in. No, don't use it. Don't use it. Hey, we got some questions that are popping up. So let's see. Uh, uh, how much should spend on initial conversation? Dave, that's great. Should I leave voicemails when I'm prospecting? Oh, great. Let's jump into these questions because I told you this was going to be a coaching session. Should I leave voicemails? Yes. You always leave a voicemail with two exceptions. Two exceptions. The two exceptions are this. When I'm calling during a holiday week when a lot of people are on vacation, you do not leave it. Because think about this. Last thing you want to do is you want to you want to come back to work or you check, you know, you've been on holiday or vacation, whatever, and you check your voicemail and it's full. And you listen to it and it's full of nothing but vendor salespeople messages. No, you don't want to do it. So that's the one time when I say when somebody is on when you think they're going to be on, on vacations, like next week, I would not be leaving voicemails. Or if they say, and it's an automated response, hey, I'm out of the office for the next week, da, da, da. No, don't. What I am going to do is I'm going to listen to that message and see, hey, does it give me the number and name of somebody else to call? Then you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call them. I'm going to call them. And I'm going to see if I can't get some good information from them. So yeah. Now, here's the other piece. When you do leave a voicemail, this is really, this is really key. It's got to be between 11 and 14 seconds. Okay, it can slide up to about 16 seconds, but it's got to be tight. It's got to be really, really tight. Now, to leave that tight message like that, how do, how, how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. Hi, I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Got some information regarding how you can competitively respond more effectively next year. Give me a call, 402-598-6194, 402-598-6194. Now, what did I do? I left a very tight voicemail, about, probably about, I don't know, 15, 16 seconds. I only said one simple call. I didn't give them information. I just said, I have some information. Because what you want to do is you want to invite them to call you back. Now, here's the whole thing. In terms of inviting them to call you back, are they going to call you back? No, probably not. That's okay. That's okay. I'm okay with it. See, I see the voicemail is really a billboard along the side of the road. It may take you 20, 30 billboards before you really begin to respond and say, hey, wow, this is something I really, I really got to pay attention to. Yeah, I got to do. The second thing regarding a short, tight voicemail is because more voicemail systems are actually converting it to text. So think about this. If you leave this 30, 40, 50 second voicemail and it gets converted to text, there's no way they're ever going to read it. So what I want to do is I want to leave a very tight voicemail. What does that also do? Wow. That says, hey, this person's respecting my time. This is tight. So guess what happens? Sooner or later, you're going to reach out to them. You're going to connect with them. And boom, you'll be there. Yeah, you see, simple, some easy, simple tips. And I got a bunch more that I'll jump into. But wow, questions are, are flowing in here. How much time should be spent on the initial conversation? Two things you're looking for on the initial conversation. One, a reason to call them back and a scheduled time to call them back. That's all I'm looking for on in that initial conversation. Unless I'm in a one-call sale. 
you know, I might be selling cookies. I might be selling, you know, something simple. What I, I'm, I'm trying to get to work. But by and large, what everybody's here on this call is, I'm looking for two things. One piece of information I can use to follow up with and a scheduled time with which to call. Because I interrupted their day, so now I'm going to have to. That's all I'm asking for. If I can get more information out of that initial call, that's great. But that's all I'm initially looking for. Hey, a couple more questions. Let me go and jump, jump into them. Um, how do you deal what to say to, to a sharp negative rejection on a call call? Hey, thanks so much. Goodbye. I don't worry about it. If I get rid... If you get a sharp rejection on a phone call, I almost say thank you. You know why? Because you know what? There's no way that you're going to dance with me anyway. So just be upfront. Tell me upfront, and I can move on to the next person. It does not phase me. Now, this is what's interesting. That sharp rejection doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not going to call them back. I, I, I may call them back. I, I very easily call them back. Because no is, is never permanent. No is only a moment in time. There have been times when people have called me and, I, and I've said no to them. I haven't given, hopefully I haven't given them a sharp rejection, but, I, but I've told them no, only because I, I, I'm not interested right now. But three, four, six months from now, I could very well be interested. And that's absolutely terrific. I've, I'm going to jump all over that. See, So the sharp rejection doesn't phase me in the least bit. I move on to the next one. I can deal with a lot of rejection. That's okay. Because at the end of the day, I know that only X percent of my calls are going to be effective, are really going to translate to something. And that's OK. I'm OK with that. Hey, more questions. Continue to roll in. Face to face cold call. Yeah. Ooh, uh, email is good for that. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm, I'm not going to really talk a lot about. Uh, we'll see how time goes regarding email. Face to face cold call. Same tactic. Same strategy. You may have to do a little more of an introduction on a face to face cold call. But I still want to jump right in, right into the question because what I want to do, whether you be on the phone, whether you be face to face, you are a bobblehead doll, and I'm, boop, 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 boop. I'm just tapping your head. I'm getting you moving. Yeah, yeah. Okay, some more questions. Um, will there be a recording of this? Yes, there'll be a recording of this. Um, does stopping in work for larger sales? Uh, uh, Paola, please rephrase that question. Will this re webinar, webinar be recorded? Yes. Email marketing thoughts. Yes, I, 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 I do. Um, uh, here's the whole thing regarding email. Never use email as the tool. Use email as a tool. What I use is I love to use the telephone and email together. I use them both. Now you say, Mark, I don't have phone numbers for people. Yeah, but you know what? There's probably a general phone number that you can call, and then you can work your way through. And the easiest way to work your way through is simply by picking up the phone. You call that number and you say, hey, I'm looking for whoever's in charge of X. And generally, people will kind of coordinate. They'll say, well, who is this? Well, da, da, da. Here, here's the thing to avoid. You never say that you're selling something because what they'll do is they'll refer you to purchasing. They'll refer you to procurement. You do not want to go. You want to go to whoever's, whoever is responsible for, whoever's in charge of this. That's who you want to go to because you want to go to the user, not the buyer, because I want to find out from the user. And then I'm gonna work away. If you can't find anything, if you can't find anything out that way, you know what you do? You just ask for the sales department. I, th this is what's very funny. You call even the largest business or even any business out there. And there are two departments that will always answer the phone. This is what's funny. HR departments don't even answer the phone anymore. They let it go to voicemail. But there are two departments that always will. Accounts receivable, because they always want money, and sales, sales. So guess what? You, you just ask for sales. And the person who answers the phone is going to be the most junior salesperson. Now, be upfront with them. Tell them, hey, I'm a salesperson. I'm just like you. But you know what? They're going to want to help you if they see that you are willing to help them. I love that. Great. Great. Hey, let's jump on here. Let, let, let's talk about some more here. Yeah. When would, when would work best for you? No. You never say, well, hey, when would work best for me to, to call you? No. You have to own the time. You control the time. Now, what do I mean by that? So you call somebody up and you jump into it and they say, oh, I don't have time to talk right now. Don't say when would be a best time for you. No. What you say is how does today at two o'clock work for you? Or how does today at three o'clock or which would work better? Three o'clock or 3.30 for me to call you. You always recommend a time. Now, here's why. You're pushing the issue. Because what they'll say is, if you say, when would it work best for me to call you back? Well, you know, I'm pretty busy. Call me back in several months. That's not good enough for you. No, 
I want to call them back now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend and I, I'm going to recommend them one time later in the day or one time the next day or give them an option and say, would it work best for me to call you at, 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 at 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock tomorrow? You force them to. it. And if they say, well, neither of those times work, then I'd say, well, let's look at Tuesday. How's your calendar look for? But again, what I'm doing is I'm opening at the time, but I'm still in control. Early on in a prospecting call, you have to drive the discussion. Don't allow the customer to drive the discussion. Now, you're allowing them to input because you're asking them questions, but you have to drive it. Because remember, you've interrupted their day. Hey, let's, gra let's grab some more of these questions here because they are flying in. Um, does stop, uh, let's see, uh, best phrases to schedule an in-person meeting where the buyer has come to you. Yeah, you, you simply say, hey, great. We've got 20 minutes right now, let's talk. Here's the whole thing. When you have the ability to talk with anybody, your number one objective is to gain a critical piece of information that you can use to follow up with them on. Now think about this for a moment. If I can gain one piece of information from you that I can follow up with you on, what does that do? That now gives me the opportunity to have a reason to follow up with you. And this is the neat trick. On that second call that you do, you always start off by saying, Ross, when we talked last week, you mentioned X, 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 and you repeat exactly what they said. Now think about this for a moment. You're a salesperson. You've only talked to them once. You're calling them back, and you're referencing back to what they shared with you. What does that tell them? I go, wow, this guy really paid attention. This lady really understood. I can't believe it. And oh, by the way, nobody ever shuts down somebody when they are saying what you said. You know, if, if, if you were talking to me and you were telling me what I had told you earlier, wow, I'm going to be blown away. So I always start off with that. You see how I'm doing? I'm creating. Now, I, I hope you're also catching something with the way. I really believe about prospecting. I absolutely love prospecting. I, I absolutely love sales. And I think it's probably coming through a little, little bit on this call because I've been anxious to have this with you. Okay, let's see. Uh, we get we got some more. Um, does stopping in work for larger sales? You know what's funny? Stopping in for larger sales, it actually has an inverse effect. The larger the sale, it, it, it actually has, because larger sales, people want to take more of a contemplative, reflective, analytical approach. Quick sales are actually uh, have a higher response rate by just stopping by. But remember, you're not just stopping by or not. I was just in the area. When, when, when you step, when, when, when you stop in and you say, I was just in the area and I'm stopping in, what does that tell the person? Oh, I see. I, I'm not very important. No. You say, hey, you always have a dedicated reason. And that dedicated reason is a, just one critical piece of information regarding that business, that industry. That's all you need. That's all you need. And I'll come back and I'll kind of build on some more of those. Um, email marketing thoughts. Yeah, e email marketing thoughts. I, I, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, oh, this is, I love these questions. These are just rolling in. Um, do you have an example of the initial question? Let me jump in here. Yes. The initial question I love to ask is this. I might be calling somebody up and we'll say I'm in the staffing industry, okay? And, you know, there's a lot of regulatory changes that are always taking place from OSHA to labor laws, et cetera, et cetera. So my initial question might be, or maybe it's just unemployment is really tightening up and you can't get people. So I might call somebody up and I say, hey, this is Mark Hunter. What challenges are you facing? in terms of staffing your second shift. What challenges are you facing in terms of getting welders? You see, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm putting a point, in, because they may be in, in an industry that they can't get welders. And I know in a lot of markets around the country right now in the staffing industry, that's a huge issue. You know, you might call somebody up and you say, hey, how are you dealing with the supply issue with this? Or did you notice have you seen the latest regulatory changes? You see, I don't always have to open with an open question. 
it may be a closed question in terms of asking a yes or no. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, have you seen the regulatory changes regarding X? Okay. And they might say no. And you say, well, that's what a lot of people have said, and they're really impacting them. Then I go right into a follow-up question on that. Now, what I'm getting to is a piece that I'm going to get to when we talk to you in terms of having five questions. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to build on that some more. So anyway, uh, what would work? What time would work best for you? Okay, I, I think I'm talking about that. Oh, I, I hate this one. This one. Hi. I'm Mark Hunter. And da, 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 da. You, you go in and, and you start off a phone call like that, and they're going to go, You are boring me. You're killing me. You are interrupting. And especially if you say, we are, we are the world's largest, or we've been in business for 85 years or something. Does the customer care? No, the customer doesn't care. I, I, I get to work with a lot of salespeople, a lot of different companies. And I was with one the other day. And he was making phone calls. And he said, we've been in business for 65 years. And I said, why is that important? Well, that's really important because we've been in business longer than anybody else. I said, do you think the customer really cares initially? No, they don't. They, they might care later on down the road, but no, they don't care. No, they don't. Don't waste your time spending on that type of stuff. I, I just say, hi, I'm Mark Hunter. And I ask my question. Then I let the customer come back and ask me to fill in the pieces. I let the customer come back. But I always keep coming back to asking them that first question. Now, this takes me to a strategy that I love to use when I'm prospecting. And, and I tell companies when I'm coaching people, I, I should. I say, okay, let's take your prospecting list and let's start breaking it apart by industry. Because what I want to do is on Tuesday, I'm going to call this industry. Wednesday, I'm going to call this industry. Thursday, I'm going to call this industry. And what this means is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a very tight question that I can use for this industry, a tight question I can use for this industry. And I went, see, ah, you see what I'm doing? What I do is I get in the groove. Now, here's what I found from a prospecting standpoint. You might be making all these calls. And what's very interesting is, have you ever talked to somebody who really knows your industry well? Yeah, you, you feel very comfortable. And then you talk to somebody who doesn't know your industry well. And it shows. What I found is when I can make all my calls in a respective industry on one day, we'll say, I kind of get in the groove. I get in the groove. Oh, by the way, don't cheat yourself. Make sure you're taking notes on every piece of information you, you learned regarding that industry. Why? Because it helps you be more beneficial. What I'll say is that you may be a salesperson. And you may be, you may sell into, we'll say, six or seven different industries. Maybe you sell into one industry, but there's five or six different types of customers, you know, five or six different types of customers that you sell to. Maybe you sell into one type of customer, but there's different departments. What I do is I, I will simply take a, a piece of paper, and literally it's as crude as can be, and I just write that industry at the top of the page. And anytime I get a piece of industry note, I just jot it down on that piece of paper. I just jot it down on that piece of paper or that division or whatever. And I just, so what I've got is if I'm calling light manufacturing companies, and I'm going to be calling 20 light manufacturing companies today, I can go to that notebook. I can look, oh, there's that page. Oh, this is great. And I can just scan that page of information. And here's what's interesting there may be nothing you use on that piece of paper in your calls that day. But just by having that there and reading it, what does it do? It makes you more confident. It simply makes you more confident. I love that approach. I love it, I love it. Hey, we got some more questions here. Let me uh, jump back in and get some more of these questions answered here. Um, email marketing thoughts, yeah. Let, let me talk about that for a bit. Um, Hold on, hold on, let's see, uh, tra transaction, but not for comp. Okay, hey, yeah, I've heard dropping by works for transactional sales, but not complex sales. Yeah, that, that's really what I found, yeah. Uh, complex sales, dropping by for complex sales works, but I really have found the telephone to be really a more effective ROI. Ooh, I'm using the term ROI, sales ROI. Because think about this, at the end of the day, you gotta make sure that your sales time is generating X amount of sales. So you may have a conversation with somebody, but is it really beneficial? 
So transactional, I won't hesitate to do door-to-door -door if it's a dense enough market that I can do it. Some industries, very, very effective. A lot of industries, no, because you're ge geographically dispersed. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you adding mailing letters, bumpy mail to get hot prospects? Oh, I love, I tell you what, I love that. I was just with a gentleman. In fact, here, let, let me pull, let me pull it up here. I, I, I just had lunch. I just had lunch last week with a good friend of mine. Uh, who has written a book, How to Get Meeting with Anybody, Stu uh, uh, Heineck. He's a uh, cartoonist for the Wall Street Journal and the New Yorker magazine. I mean, I'm, is that cool? This is a lumpy, bumpy mail that he sends out. Now, it's not available yet. He, it's patent pending, so don't think you can cheat on it. But what he does is he's created a cardboard folder, card, cardboard mailer here with a little insert, and it's a cartoon in there. See, he writes cartoons. And in, in, in a cartoon, it's a cartoon card. Wow, does that create response? Yeah. So lumpy, bumpy mail really does work well. I have got several clients that I have developed and I've created just by sending them candy, just by sending them candy. Now, again, you got to figure out what your right strategy is. You got to write, you know, this is why, I, this is why you really got to have kind of a coaching person to kind of guide you through that. And that's what I'm doing here. And let me just take a break here for just a moment because what I'm doing here is I'm sharing with you a little bit of a sample of the monthly coaching calls that people get when they're in the program, in the coaching program. So anyway, but hey, this, this dialogue is terrific. My company prefers us to cold call in person. Do you have any tips for that? Media advertising, just get out and go do it. I, I, I don't hesitate. I, I don't media. I work with a lot of companies where we do door to door. We do door to door, and that's quite all right, even in business parts. And, and this is what's funny. I'll come into a building, and, and bear with me for just a moment if, if you're not in this market, um, where it says no solicitors allowed. I'm not soliciting. I'm helping. I don't, I, don't, I don't let anything stop me because I'm firmly committed to saying what I have is what you need, and, and I want to help you. Hey, here's this one. Sure. I can email you some information. You'd never, ever do that. You'd ever, never, 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 ever do that. This, this, this is kiss of death. Wait, 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 when they say, well, I don't have time to talk right now. Why don't you just email me some information? What are they doing? They're blowing you off. No. What you sit there and your response is, hey, sounds like you're busy. How about if I call you back Tuesday at 10 o'clock? And you recommend that specific time. And or you say, hey, you know what? I, there's so much information I could send you. I don't know what to send you. So let's grab some time, Tuesday, 10 o'clock. Or you sit there and say, hey, you got a minute right now? Let's get online right now. Let me show you, let me show you. And you set up an online demonstration tool. I like Zoom, Zoom. Might be go to meeting, it might even be Skype. I don't know what it is, but you, you have to never ever respond to that whole piece of, well, can you just email me some information? No. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> I love this one. Um, you can call me back when you're ready. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're busy? Okay. Well, why don't you just call me back when you're ready? They're never going to be ready. They're never going to be ready. Uh, this, is, this is a kiss of death for somebody who's like selling life insurance, selling insurance. Hi, I'm selling fire insurance. Call me back when you're ready. So what are you saying? Call you back just before the house catches on fire? No. No. You never say that. Wait, wait. Instead of saying that, this is when you come back and you sit there and say, no, hey, Tuesday, 10 o'clock, Thursday, 4.15. You automatically recommend this sometimes. Hey, let's get into some green light. Let's get into some go, go. Number one, always give options. You always give, always give them options. Now, here's something very interesting. If I give you an option, it kind of forces you to speak. You see, one of the challenges I've found is... If I don't get the prospect to speak, I have zero chance of having my call be successful. See, but if I give you options, it forces you to speak. And then what I do is I may give you an option. So are you finding enough welders for the first shift or the second shift? And I'm giving them that basically a closed question, right? They'll say the second, the first shift. Really? What are some of the things that you've been doing now? See, it's always the follow-up question. I always want to be ready with that follow-up question. 
Because now what am I doing? Now I've turned the table. Well, in the eyes of the prospect. Now think about this for a moment. See, here's what's happening. I'm in control of the conversation, but I'm now asking you for your opinion. So now you feel like you're in control, the prospect. What am I doing? I'm creating an engaging discussion. This is the whole goal. Now, the challenge you want to have is you want to have this very much laid out by industry that you're calling into. And if you're part of the coaching program and sign up now and I'll give you that one hour, I'll give you an hour coaching. I'll give you an hour one on one coaching. And, and if you've already signed up for it, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you an hour of one on one coaching. And I'll help you develop those very specific scripts on it. So stick around. If, 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 if you don't know how to get into the coaching program, stick around for a bit and I'll share with you how to get involved in it. Because believe me, it's absolutely gold. But you always give the customer options. Number two, time-sensitive statements. I love giving time. If, if you don't give a time-sensitive statement, you said, call me that. It's like saying, well, we'll just touch base in five years, 10 years. No. Time-sensitive is... is Tuesday, Wednesday, this month, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, you always try to embed a time. Those regulatory changes that are going to take effect July 1st. The, the new competitor that's coming into the marketplace July 1st. You always try to use time-sensitive statements whenever you're talking to somebody. What does this do? It just creates a sense of urgency because here's one of the whole things. I can have a great conversation with you as a prospect. You may be a good prospect, but you may have no commitment, no need to buy from me now. So what happens is I just wind up dragging the selling process out longer and longer. I can't afford to do that. What I want to have is I want to have a prospecting funnel that brings you in as a lead and moves you through the customer very quickly. Because it's easier for me to manage and it's easier, for really easier for you. So what I want to do is I want to have a big, quick. When it's quick like that, boom, it's there. So I love using time sensitive piece. Now here's one, use industry words. Go back to the idea I shared with you on that worksheet. Remember that worksheet I shared with you? I think no, that sheet I just said by industry. Keep Whenever you hear a term, you jot it down. And you say, well, Mark, I don't know the industry. That's what Google's for. I can go out. And you know what's very interesting is I work in a tremendous number. You know, I, I, I spend, I don't know, 230, 240 days a year on the road traveling, working with a lot of, lot of different industries. And I, I may not know a lot of information, but what I do, I just spend five minutes on Google. I can spend a few minutes. Wikipedia. Wikipedia may not be a, a authoritative and everything, but it's okay. It works. I look at some industry websites. I want to be able to use industry words in my conversations because now what does it do? It, it raises my level of credibility. You see, what I have to do is I have to realize this. The customer I'm calling probably is doing business with somebody already. Okay, a lot of you are selling items where it's kind of a where you would have to kick somebody else out. So that means there's an industry relationship already established. So guess what? I got to come in minimally equal to them. You may not be selling something that is that you have to educate or, or you do have to educate because they don't currently buy. You know, it's a new service and like that. But that means they're even skeptic. That means they're even more skeptical. But if they see how it fits into the industry they're in, it's more beneficial. This is why I can't emphasize enough that you have that sheet, that you're just keeping it all there with. Hey, let's jump in back in. We got a ton more questions that have rolled in. Um, Beth, best method to get direct business locally from a large client who uses national buys with an agency. Yes, you're local. You're local. You see, you want to sell yourself. Here's one of the things that I love doing from a prospecting standpoint. What am I doing from a prospecting standpoint? I'm allowing you to see that I'm different, and I want you to see that I'm different. When you see that I'm different and I can bring some value, there's some added benefit to that. Now, 
how do I know if I'm bringing added value in the prospecting process? Here's the two words you're looking for. When the prospect says, great question. What I want to do as early as possible, I want to ask a question that gets the prospect to say, great question. And here's why. When the prospect says, great question, what is that telling you? Wow, they're really having to think about it. And it means that they probably don't have the answer. And hopefully you don't either. Ooh, this is really scary. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Mark. You said earlier, from a prospecting standpoint, you got to stay in control. Yeah, I'm still in control. But now what I've got is I've got a question on the table that the prospect has said, great question. They can't answer, you can't answer. Now guess what? You two get to have a dialogue. You two get to have a conversation. What does that do? That increases the level of credibility that you're bringing to the table. So when you got somebody locally who's making national buys from, you know, are they getting that level of service? No. You have to be the one. You're the one that can walk in the door. You're the one that can sit down with them and explain them. Let's get some one-on-one -on -one coaching time and I'll walk you through on a bunch more tech techniques on that. Um, how are you adding mailing letter? Oh, yeah, let's see what let's see. Um, uh, how many calls you should make per day? This 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 is really going to depend. This is going to depend upon the industry, depending on the business you're in. I say this, that there are a lot of people probably all on this call that are in an account management situation. So they're already, so they're having to manage existing customers. They may only be able to make 10 prospecting calls a day. Some of you might be, no, you don't. So you may have to make 50 prospecting calls. Here's the key thing though. Don't start what you can't finish. One of the biggest problems people make is they make all these calls, but they have no ability to follow up. The best advice you'll ever find, I, I found it this morning in my shower. The best advice I ever had, I found in my shower. And, and you know what the advice was? It was on the shampoo bottle. What? Really? Yeah. On the bottom of the shampoo bottle, it said, repeat, repeat. You see, I'm probably going to have to repeat and talk to you two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. What's the right frequency? It's going to depend upon what you're selling. If you're in a consumable and they're purchased frequently, I can contact you more frequently. I, you know, I, I, I contact you every other day. I can contact you a couple times a week. If on the other hand, you're, it's a large cyclical purchase, you only make once a year, I might only be able to contact you every other week. The mode that I start out with is what I call six MPM, six messages per month. And I build plus or minus off of that depending on what I'm selling, six messages per month. It's not all going to be phone calls. It's going to be phone calls and emails. And what I do is I do, I do a cycle of contacting you. If you don't respond, I move you over to my marketing list somewhere else, and I put a different group of names in. Go through those, and I put them over. Bring another, and then so what I'm doing is I kind of do this in one-month cycles. So I may reach out to you six times in a month, we'll say, and we'll say it's June, and getting to the end of June, and you haven't responded. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move you over here, okay? And I'm going to go to a different list for July, different list for August, and I'll either bring you back into my this June list back in, in, in September or October. Again, just depending upon the frequency you build it. But this is the cadence that you set up from a sales standpoint. And when you set that cadence up, it's amazing how much more effective you're going to be because you're going to be using your time much more effectively. So don't start what you can't finish. Okay. We got some more questions, a lot more questions coming in. I love this. Um, most important traits to develop, to become a top producer, two really important traits, coach and discipline, coach and discipline. Oh, by the way, the discipline will is the discipline you'll see in a coach and the coach will bring you the discipline that is, that is without a doubt because the most critical piece is the follow through. If you don't follow through, you're not going to be successful. And oh, by the way, when you follow through, you know what's going to be interesting? You're going to wind up creating a contagious attitude. I mean, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm with salespeople all the time, and they say, man, your, your attitude is so contagious. And you're right, it is. I, I, I have people share that with me all the time. They say, man, it's, it's, it's incredible. When, when I get to spend time with you, I'm, I'm, I'm jacked. And see, that's kind of what you want to have there. Okay, we got to keep, man, this is, 
this is just unbelievable the number of questions i i like this is this is super um if i have a product to sell what are your thoughts on sending that to prospects at a time no don't send the product at a time don't send the product because you know what you're doing you're not selling a product you are not to be selling a product you're selling an outcome you're selling the outcome. you're not even see a product is the feature and I'm not even into this benefit thing. No, we sell benefit. No, no I, I want to sell the outcome. I, I, I want to sell the outcome. Because what happens is if I send the product, they're going to look at this and go, well, I, 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 don't, I don't need this. I don't need this. You know, I, I just, just don't need this. But now if you tell them how they're going to benefit from it and the outcome they're going to achieve, that's what you want to do. Then you send them the product. You see, what's very interesting is, is it's, not even, it's not what you sell. It's not even how you sell. Whoa, did he just say that? Yeah, I just said that. It's why you sell. Why you sell is to help people achieve an outcome they didn't think was successful. Okay, let's move on here and I'll come back and I'm gonna grab some. Is this beneficial? I, I really hope this is beneficial. And again, this is this is what we do. This is what we do in the monthly coaching program. The, the added value, the added, the added value is we get to go in kind of a two-way video. And in the monthly coaching program, not only do you get this, but you get weekly video. Every Monday morning, I send out to you an extended. Some of you may get my 60 second video. No, you get an extended play video. In fact, this last Monday, the people who were who are in the coaching circle, I was in Tampa for the weekend speaking at a conference. And I did video right from sitting right on the edge of the Tampa Bay. Uh, but it's kind of real time video. It's like a three, four minute video, but every Monday and it's real time because I gave very specific strategies as to how do you achieve maximum results that last week of the of the calendar half of the first half that's what you get and then you also get access to my inner circle 24 7 uh, where, where you can fire off to me questions and you can dialogue with other members and so forth so a lot of stuff in the coaching program okay let, uh, let's see um what's the next one what's the next one here um what's it say oh move to an online interaction i'm sorry i yeah moved this is what's cool and and be thinking about how you can do this in your business, okay? What you want to do is you want to have go to meeting always set up or Zoom or Skype or something like that. So you're talking to somebody. Now, again, the initial piece in a prospecting call is I only need two pieces of information. I just need one piece of information to follow up and a, dead, and a time that you're going to commit to that we're going to have that follow up call. But you may have some that can go on longer and they start peppering you with questions. So, guess what? I have, hey, great. Do you have video there? Great. Let's jump online. Here's a link. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email you this link right now. Let's jump online. If I can take a prospecting call and move them to an online in interaction, what have I done? I have automatically generated boom. Now, for some businesses, for some of you, you might say, nah, I'm not going to do that on the first one, but I'm going to do that on the second one. But the idea being that if you can have some sort of an online interaction that you can do with people, you're going to be really cool. Five questions. Every prospecting call you make, you've got to have at least five questions that you can be ready to ask them with. Ask them with. That's terrible English. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. You gotta have five questions that you can ask. Now, here's the whole thing with these five questions. Boom, boom, boom. They may not all be connected. It may be something regarding what's happening in the industry, something that's happening with a competitor, something happening with them, but you're ready. Because here's the whole thing. Chances are you're probably only going to ask one or maybe two questions on a prospecting call. And again, these are going to be very industry specific. But again, you may get into an extended play conversation. Guess what? I want to be ready. I want to be ready. You may be normally having a question because you are reaching this person, but suddenly you get this person on the call. Okay, guess what? I've got to have a different question. So I always want to sit there and have five questions that I can jump over to. Now, I'm going to run through the next couple of slides, and we're going to hit a whole lot more Q&A, okay? Anyway, uh, what's this one say? Um, gain approval on what? Yeah, this, this, is, this, this is what you're striving for. You want to gain approval on one thing you can use for the next call. That, that's what you're looking for. This, this is the ultimate piece as to what you are looking for. Because really what you want to do is you want to get to something that gets you to next week. You want to get you to something that gets you to the next call. Now, 
Should it be next week? Again, it's going to depend on the industry. If I'm selling something that is cyclical, more, more difficult nature, I may recommend a time next Tuesday. If, however, what I'm selling is a consumable that the customer buys every day, I may sit there and say it's tomorrow. It's the next day. Boom, boom. I've got to be right there on it. Now, I'm going to jump in. I got a, we got a lot more questions I'm going, to, I'm going to jump into. But, hey, this is the coaching piece, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. you got to grab this. You, you're going to get, if, if, if you jump on right now, you're going to get everything that's on that page. But you're also going to get the special bonus of the, the, of the second half coaching call, which takes place on Friday of this week. And you're going to get the one-on-one -on -one bonus session. I'm going to give you one-on-one. -on -one. I'm off the road for the next 12 days. I, I, I don't leave town until Friday, a week from Friday. And I intend to fill my calendar with you, with you, coaching time. Sign up for this program. Along with the program, you get the weekly video. It comes out every Monday morning. It comes right to your email box. Real time. Like I said, this I was actually in my running clothes. I was in my running clothes sitting on the Tampa Bay. Yeah, it was a hot morning. Yeah, it was hot. And then you also get this same monthly, just like what we're doing here. It, it's this monthly call where I, I'm sharing with you information and I'm taking questions. Plus, you get the 24-7 access to the inner circle. So I tell you what, I can't do this. Now, here's the whole deal. We've got over 600 people that are on this call right now. Okay. And I, I can't do the coaching thing for all 600. Sorry. And uh, I'll tell you what, I can do it for maybe 10 or 15 of you right now. So jump on this thing right now. Sign up for it. Send me an email. Send me an email. And I'm going to get your time set up. And I'm going to give you an hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm going to be very, very specific. We're going to get you those industry-specific questions, but I can't. So it's lp.thesaleshunter.com. Get into it. And this is the program that just runs every month. And let me tell you something. People who are in it, I, 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 was, I, I met one of my members. Um, I, I, I meet a lot of my members as I, tra I, as, I travel, as I travel around the country. And when I was in Tampa, at this trade association, I met one of my members and um, we had a one wonderful conversation. So that's kind of the added benefit that as I kind of jump it around the country and around the world, you also get that. But anyway, hey, we're going to jump. I'm going to leave this up here, but let's jump into Q&A. OK, let's kind of keep rolling here. Um, we have a hard time finding the right person to talk to. Any thoughts on how to get the correct person? Yes. Here, here's 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 what I do. I ask for it. Hey, who is in charge of this or who uses this? That's really what I say. And I, I just go for the general number and I'll say, who uses this? Or what department is in charge of this? And I go, never say that you're selling or buying because then they sell you, then they send you to purchasing, procurement. <laughs> Those are the death departments. I want to call them. If you can't get in that way, then what you do is you call sales. Call sales. Salesperson will answer. You talk with them. If you can't find that out, you go by way of social media. Again, chances are well, somebody in that company is going to be out on LinkedIn. You develop a relationship. Remember, LinkedIn is social media first. It's not selling media. It's social media. Any of you are out there prospecting, connecting with people, and then you automatically, hi, you did. Oh, shut up. I'm sorry. I'm going to get on a rant here. That drives me nuts. But there's any number of different ways. And again, we can talk about that very, very specifically with your industry and some one-on-one -on -one calls. Um, wow, this is this is just mind-blowing. Um, it's interesting. People are already jumping on this thing, so that's cool. I, I, I see the notes coming through right now. Uh, absolutely cool. Um, and I'll get you time set up, okay? So lpthesaleshunter.com, get you that. And like I said, I'm, I'm adding in the, the one, I'm adding in the, the special hour coaching because I'm off the road for the next week. When are you, uh, what is a good opening when you are talking to a prospect who is already working with your competition and the vast majority of you are calling people over your competition. This is where I say I reference something and I don't talk about, don't talk about the competition. Don't talk about the competition. Reference something in the industry. Hey, are you aware of changes regarding this? Are you aware with performance changes on this or how this has changed some of that to get a dialogue? Then they may sit there and say, well, oh, oh, that's who you sell for. Da, da, da. You say, well, we already buy from so-and-so. It's great, terrific. They're great people. What are some of the things that you like about them? I always start off by saying, what are some things that you like about them? And you know what's funny? 
customers are like shocked. They're like shocked. What is? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I do want. I want to know what is it people like. Because hey, it just gives me competitive information. But then what it can do? It can begin to give me a little bit of insight as to why it might be in the area. Because oftentimes what I found is customers will share with you what they like about their current supplier. And then they'll suddenly start saying, wait, well, you know what? Maybe you've dropped the ball on this. Or they, oh, really? Well, hey, we can help them. Here's what I love. One of the best strategies I love on taking business from competitors is, of course, going to happen next week, next week, because it's a holiday week. And that competitor of yours may easily be on vacation. So guess what? You're going to be making those calls, scoring business. I used to manage a supply house, uh, a wholesale supply house. And we routinely secured the majority of our new customers that we stole from competitors during holiday weeks because we make calls and they, the customer needs something and we could supply it to them. Hey, some more people are, are getting signed up for this thing. It's terrific. LP.thesalecenter.com. And then let's get that one on one coaching time set up, uh, let's see what time. In a highly competitive technology services and security industry where people like to work with the partners they are already working with, what's the best way in those relationships? Yeah, this is where you gotta kinda use a two-fold approach. Get involved in your in your industry association, okay? They gotta see you. Get involved on social media and social media groups in that industry. What they wanna see is they wanna make sure that you're not an outlier. So what I do is I try to create my presence in the industry. Now, this can take a little bit of time, I realize that, but this is what's interesting. In this industry that you're talking talking about, Eric, what's very interesting is customers don't, don't change very much. So when you land one of those customers, they're gonna stay with you. So it's gonna take a little longer sales approach, which may mean you're gonna probably have to have more customer, more prospects, more leads in your funnel. See, again, you're going to build your funnel based on what it is. Wow. A lot of people are signing up for this thing. I, I, keep, keep going. I, I, I will commit to you. I will commit to you. You sign up for this thing. I'll get you the one-on-one -on -one coaching. I can see I'm going to be working a lot over the next couple of weeks doing one-on-one -on -one coach, but I love, I love doing that because boy, based on these questions, it's terrific. So lp.thesalescenter.com. Um, what have you seen from cold email campaigns? Bad idea. Yeah. The biggest bad idea I've seen is where people make one call and they give up. Don't. You've got to be repetitious. The second bad idea is where they send out so much information that the customer can make a decision without them. This is the big thing regarding prospecting emails. Prospecting emails should be no more than four to six sentences, two to three paragraphs per email, and double space between each paragraph. And the two most important pieces the subject line and the first 150 characters. If you start off that email by saying, hi, I'm Mark Hunter, I'm the number one, the blah, 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 salesperson, delete. You see, we write prospecting emails on our laptop or our desktop, but they tend to get read on a smartphone. And what does that mean? What does that mean? They get deleted quickly on a smartphone. That's why the smartphone is so smart, because it deletes very quickly. So what I got to do is I got to do the call to action right up front. I got to say new information regarding this or updated specs on this, something of that nature. And again, I'll, I'll help you. I'll, 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 I'll write them for you. When we do our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah, more people are signing up for this thing. This is great. We're, we're going we're gonna to create a second. We're going to create a second wave of this. So absolutely terrific. Um, and I'm going to make a commitment. I, I, I will stick to it. I'm going to be gone for a couple of days, uh, the 11th through the 14th, something like that. But I'm home for a few days after. We'll make, we'll make sure you sign up for this thing. I'll get you that one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's my commitment to you. Uh, where is the sheet? I missed the first few minutes. We didn't have a sheet, but I'm going to get you the link. I'm going to get you the link, okay? And, um, oh, I, 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 see an, I see a note that just came through. Yeah, when you sign up for the coaching program, you will automatically start getting the, the uh, weekly uh, extended play video in real time that I send out every Monday morning. So you'll start getting that this coming Monday morning. And I don't take holidays. I don't take holidays on that, okay? So just because it's July 3rd, a lot of people are gonna be off, you will still get that Monday morning and you'll get access to the 24-7 um, uh, group. Um, and of course, the monthly calls. And everything gets recorded, so if you can't make something, you can do it, yeah, yeah. 
and uh, man, just it's these questions are coming in. Auto audio dropped off, Mark. I apologize, Jerry. Hopefully, you get oh, reconnect. Good, I'm glad you're back on. Explain your marketing list. Um, Jennifer, why don't you ask that question with a little more expansion on that, and I'll try to do it. How do you convince a prospect to try you when they've had unfavorable experiences with your competitors? That's why they need to try you. You know, this is the, the thing you're selling first is yourself. The thing you are selling, your, you have to sell yourself first. You have to sell yourself. And what it is, is nobody's going to buy until they have a level of trust and confidence in you. And nobody's going to have a level of confidence in you until they've seen that you really have integrity. Oh, there's a key one. Prospect with integrity, and you'll get clients who have integrity. Yeah, keep that one in mind. Tweet that one out. Prospect with integrity, and you'll get clients who have integrity. You see, they may have had unfavorable experiences, but what you want to do is you want to make it so easy for them to try you. This is where I think a lot of salespeople, uh, wow, I got this big sale, got this big opportunity coming up, and they just want to just run, and we're going to land this big, huge sale. And what happens is the customer gets so blown away that it's so large that they're so slow to make a decision. I say this, make it very easy. Make it very simple. Wow, more people are signing up for this thing. This is great. LP.thesaleshunter.com. My calendar is going to be full, but I'm going to love it. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. Anyway, um, and of course, the one-on-one the, the, the one -on -one coaching call for the month of June is coming up on Thursday this week. So th this is really cool. You sign up now. And not only are you getting this thing here, but you're going to get another one of these calls on Thursday, video-wise, because we use Zoom. We we use Zoom for the calls, and you're going to get that uh, the really the the big bonus piece on Friday. Plus, you're going to get the one-on-one -on -one coach. Yeah, good, good, good stuff on that. Um, back to what, what I was talking. About. I'm sorry, I get I get kind of excited here. Um, um, Know any companies hiring who have great coaches that follow your method? It sounds like you're looking for a job. Hey, email me. I'll try to set you up. Yeah, I do. I, I do. I, 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 I get to use, I get to train on this method all over the country with a lot of different companies and depend, depending on your industry. And I apologize. I got to keep putting on my glasses. I apologize. Uh, this, is, this is absolutely terrific. All of the questions that just keep rolling in. And yeah, people are signing up for this thing. So that's great. So anyway. Let, let me let me jump forward just a bit here. And we wanted to do the q and I kind of wanted to hold this to an hour to give you kind of a feel. But I think you've got kind of a feel for kind of how this whole thing works. And you may have some other questions. There's the email mark at the saleshunter.com. But to get the coaching program, get the coaching program and um, all of the other bonus pieces and the added bonus piece. It's not you go to this page right here. It's not going to talk about the. The special one-hour coaching, that's our secret, okay? That's our secret. Um, but that's, I'm, I'm, I'm doing for you. We're just jumping in on this. But I really hope I have brought you some incredible value. Yeah, more people are jumping in. This is, I, I love it. I love it. Um, my calendar, I'm going to have to do this. Um, my wife is actually out of town for the 4th of July. She's going to visit her parents. So I think the 4th of July what I'll do is I'll reserve that for my Canadian friends. Okay. So would you mind? Would you mind? Because I know July 1st is your, it is your Canada day. So what I'll do is I'll take all, anybody who signs up from Canada. I'll do your coaching call on the 4th of July. If you don't mind again, I'm, I'm going to do this because this is, this is my commitment. This, this is, this is absolutely over the top. I love it, but it's Mark, the That's my email. You got the website. You got all the information. I hope you're taking advantage of this. And I can't say it seriously enough, the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the one-on-one. -on -one. Because I'll tell you what, I, my whole goal is I want to make your second half of the year be incredibly successful. And you're not going to be that way without a little more discipline, a little more focus, and a coach. If you got to kicking you along the way. That's what I'm going to be doing for you. I'm going to be kicking you along the way. So, hey. I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. You, let's see. Do I have the book? I got to reach down to the floor. There's the book. There's the book. Hey, if you haven't bought the book, you know what's interesting? The Kindle, the Kindle version of this is still on sale for $2.99, only Amazon.com, okay, only in the U.S., but it's $2.99, the Kindle, but only through the month of June. My publisher has been so blown away by sales on that that um, they 
agree to do that. So they take care of that. Hey, if you like the book, leave me a review on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, would you? I love it. But anyway, wow, more people. I love it. LP, the sales hunter. Com. Here's something I want to leave you with. We're coming into a holiday week, and I want you to do this. I want you, A, to enjoy the holiday week, and you may have some time off yourself. That's great. That's terrific. But what I want you to do is I want you to focus in on making phone calls because you're going to find that people are going to pick up the phone, and they're going to answer, they're going to answer your calls. They're going to take your calls now more than you've ever seen before for one very simple reason, because they're kind of out of their norm. And you're going to grab business. If you're in a consumable business, especially going up against competitors, this is a week for you to jump on and be thinking about how you're going to use Labor Day week, Thanksgiving, and as we get down to the tail end of the year with Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's. Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Center. I've had a blast sharing with you for the last 66 minutes. And the questions, I love it. They keep coming. Here's the whole thing. The greatest privilege we have is in helping others see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. And that's my whole goal with the coaching program, is to help you see and achieve what you didn't think was possible. It's my email. That's the link to get involved in the coaching program. And I'm going to see you later on. Great selling.